Welcome to the Golden Gate Area Council STEM Activity Series, brought to you by the Golden Gate Area Council STEM Committee. Hi, my name is Caroline Siuki, and today we are going to run an experiment on air pressure. Air is made of gases, and gases are a curious thing. For one thing, they behave in ways that are very different from solids or liquids. And in today's activity, we're going to be studying one of those behaviors. How do gases respond to pressure? We're going to be doing this by creating our own Cartesian diver. Before we get to our activity, I wanted to explain to you about the relationship between air pressure and a couple of some really fun activities you're likely to be doing as scouts. One of those activities is mountain climbing and the other is scuba diving. One is very high up, one goes below, far below sea level. So when you think about people who climb mountains, one of the first things they will tell you is that it's harder to breathe the higher you go. And there's a reason for that. It has a lot to do how those gases behave at high altitudes. By the same token, people who dive, or if you've ever dived into water and gone deep, first thing you will notice is an awful lot of pressure in your ears. I'll bet everybody has actually felt that in the water. There's also a reason for that. And it also has to do with how gases behave under pressure. So in today's experiment, we are gonna be building a Cartesian diver. The setup is very simple. All you're gonna need is a plastic bottle, some water, a medicine dropper or a plastic pipette, and some tweezers. And I always like to have tweezers around just in case you have to pull your diver out of the water. The diver in this case will be a medis the medicine dropper or your plastic pipette. So let's talk about the materials that we have. Here is a bottle of water. The water level is very high. Here's my plastic pipette, if, if, well, actually it's a glass pipette. If you notice, I put a little bit of water in it. And the reason that I did that was because I'm gonna be putting it into my bottle of water and I wanna make sure the top of my dropper is actually in line with the top of the water. And I've discovered that this amount for my medicine dropper is perfect. One of the things I want you to look, remember is when you do this with your medicine dropper or plastic pipette, there is a space containing air still inside your dropper. So my dropper is now in the bottle. It is in the water and it's happily floating in there. But look what happens when I squeeze this bottle. The diver goes down. When I stop squeezing, the diver comes up. And let me squeeze it again. The diver goes down and the diver comes up. Leaders, this is a good time for you to pause the video and allow your scouts to make their Cartesian divers. One of the things you want to notice when you squeeze that bottle is that the bubble of air inside your medicine dropper or your plastic pipette gets smaller when you increase the pressure in the system by squeezing it. That space that is created by a smaller pocket of air gets filled with water. Therefore, your medicine dropper gets heavier and it actually begins to sink. That relationship between pressure and gas volume was actually discovered by a guy named Robert Boyle. So in the 1600s, he was the rock star scientist of his time. And in his experiment, he essentially discovered that when you have air in a closed system, like our bottle, 
and you add pressure to that air, it actually compresses. And this is a property that gases have that you can't do with liquids or with solids. You can compress gases. So the higher the pressure, the smaller the volume. In our Cartesian diver, when you squeeze the bottle, the little gas bubble inside the Cartesian diver gets smaller because that's exactly what gases do. So where does that connect with our mountain climbers and our scuba divers? The higher you go, the lower the pressure. That means when you are climbing a very tall mountain, the pressure up there is so low that the air molecules are spread far apart. So that means every time you take a lungful of air, you're actually taking less air molecules into your body. Therefore, it is harder to breathe the higher you are. The opposite is true when you go underwater and you can feel it because you can feel the pressure pulling in your, in, pushing into your ears. When you go underwater, the pressure increases. The pressure around you increases and it moves those gas molecules a lot closer to each other. That's how they respond to pressure. In the process of doing that, some gas molecules actually get incorporated into your muscles, which is the reason why when you begin to ascend back to the top of the water, you have to do it very slowly. You cannot do it fast. You must allow the gas bubbles in your muscles to slowly come out of those muscles little by little. Otherwise, they will try to expand and actually damage some of your tissue. We hope this demonstration was interesting and that you learned something about air pressure and the volume of air. Until next time, I'm signing out. Thank you.